Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today we are looking at the i3 window manager. In a previous video I created a similar guide and review for the Hyperland window manager which is a tiling window manager for Wayland. i3 is a tiling window manager for x11. So this is the default layout you get when you install the Cache version of i3. There is a bar at the top with various indicators and the rest of the screen is blank except for the wallpaper. Everything within i3 is keyboard controlled. To run an application, you use the control key and the space bar. This will bring up Rofi, which enables you to enter the name of a program as shown here. If I do it again, then a window appears next to it. To switch between the windows, I press the windows button and the left arrow to move left. And to move back to the window on the right, it is the windows button and right arrow. If windows are above and below each other, it is windows and up or down. If I continue to open applications, you can see they appear alongside as shown here. To close a window at any time, you can press the windows and Q key. To open a new workspace, you press the windows key and the number of the workspace to use. You can shift the order of windows on a workspace by pressing the windows and shift key along with one of the arrow keys. By using the up and down arrow, you can make the windows tile horizontally. Let's have a look at the config. Open up a terminal and then type cd tilde forward slash dot config forward slash i3. Now, unlike with the cache version of Hyperland, there is only a single config file called config. To edit the config file, type nano config. The mod key is set to mod4, which actually means the super key or Windows key, as most people know it. As you can see, the terminal has been set to Alacrity. You can see the keyboard shortcuts listed, and for instance, Windows MQ closes a window, and Control and Space brings up the Rofi launcher. The basic syntax for setting up a keyboard shortcut is bind sim, the keys you want to bind, exec, and then the name of the program to execute. As shown in the demo, the windows and arrow keys enable you to move between each window. By holding the window shift and arrow keys, you can move the position of a window. The window shift and space key makes the window a floating window as opposed to a tiling one. As mentioned previously, the super key with any one of the number keys moves you to that workspace. And holding the shift super key and number key moves an application to that workspace. Changes you make within the config don't take effect immediately. You have to reload the window manager. And to do that, you press the super key shift and R. And to exit out of i3 altogether, i.e. log out, then it is super shift and e. A message will appear asking if you are sure. If you want to resize a window, you press the super key and R to enter resize mode. And then you can use the arrow keys to resize the window left, right, up and down. To exit out of resize mode, press enter again. Here are the applications launched at startup. For instance, polybar is the bar at the top. You can have a terminal open on startup or indeed any other application. You can see here I have it commented out. The command to open a terminal on startup for instance is exec hyphen hyphen no hyphen startup hyphen id and then the command to run within quotation marks. You can set the defaults as to how applications appear. For instance if I had GNOME calculator installed I could default it to run as a floating window as opposed to a tiling window. I can set default board sizes, widths, colors, etc. And I can change the gaps between windows. And this is where you can customize i3 completely to your liking. You can set hotkeys for your audio buttons if you have them on your keyboard. And if you don't, you can of course assign normal keys like function keys if you so wish. You can see here that this is where the wallpaper gets set. And it uses an application called FEH to set the background. The command is exec FEH hyphen hyphen bg hyphen fill to fill the background and then the path to the image. So let's change that to one of my own. So first off I'm going to open Tuna, go to my pictures folder and then my wallpapers folder. And because it's a tiling window manager you can see this is a good thing because I can see in that folder the list of my files and in the terminal where I'm editing i3 I can see where I need to enter the text and there's no overlapping so there's no having to shift tabs to keep flipping between the two. So I type in the name of my image instead of the default and press Ctrl and O to save. 
Before I show you the amended wallpaper, I will show you how to add in your own key bindings. I recommend doing this under either the hotkey section or by creating your own section so you know where you have put your own bindings. Here I'm going to add a key binding to start Google Chrome. So I set this key to Super Shift and W and enter Google Chrome Stable as the application to run. But you'll see here I've made a couple of mistakes. So if I press Super Shift and R, it reloads i3 and you can see I have an error. And if I click on the error, it tells me what is wrong. So in the first case, I have a duplicate binding. And then even when I fix the duplicate binding by changing it to Super and G, um, I've called it Google Chrome and it should be Google Chrome Stable. But if I set it to the correct key binding, so Super and G and Google Chrome Stable, it now works. And you can visit and subscribe to Everyday Linux user on YouTube. To save the config in Nano, it is Control and O, and then if you want to exit Nano, it's Control and X. You will notice if I close the terminal, the background is still the same. However, if I log out and back in, you will see my wallpaper is now showing. So tiling window managers aren't going to be for everyone. It takes some work getting used to the keyboard shortcuts, indeed setting up the shortcuts that work for you. But I have noticed that I do get things done more quickly when using it. For the average user, I think a traditional desktop like KDE, GNOME and Cinnamon are going to be more suitable as they work out of the box and there's a minimal learning curve to using them. Having said that, I really like i3 and indeed Hyperland, and away from the camera, I will continue to use them. But for now, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time on Everyday Linux User.